everybody, this is another movie review from Rosa Sharon. I recently watched Hang Em High starring James Garner. Now, this is an old western, thinking it's coming out of the 60s or 70s. And you can tell the, um, the target audience that this was garnered towards. Because it, it definitely seems kind of, and sorry if I sound a little bit you know, feminist about this, but, um, it's very patriarchal. <laughs> I'm just gonna say it for, for what it is, but I love Westerns. I've always liked Westerns, and this one, I didn't think that the garb that Prudy was wearing was historically accurate whatsoever. It just seemed very impractical and not at all period appropriate. <laughs> I had to laugh. I thought, no, 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 no. They didn't wear see-through. Um, they didn't have dresses with see-through arms, did they? As far as I know, the depictions of the, the, um, the attire that they had, it didn't have any kind of fabric even close. To that. <laughs> it just seemed kind of weird. Yeah, that was a drawback, and a lot of the spoken, the dialogue, it was between the males, and the males made all the decisions, and Prudence seemed to be kind of in the background, and kind of like she was a little bit loony, and she was an old maid by their standards, and, but what was funny is she, she caught the eye, well, they both did, both, both Prudy and the main character who comes in to become the sheriff of this town that's completely ruined and just completely unlawful and um slowly descending into a spiral of anarchy uh, <laughs> but it's a good movie i mean given the time and everything that um uh, something like this probably never could have been written today just due to how pc everything has become unfortunately but I enjoyed it. I, I thought it was really cute. It was a good love story, despite the fact that it's definitely a very kind of semi-chauvinistic film. But I like the, the cinematography. It was absolutely beautiful. And I think that a lot of the outdoor scenes were probably somebody's backyard in California, more than likely. It's kind of like when David Lynch did the, the budget shooting for Blue Velvet. When he had the moving car scene and you see the bridge moving by. They weren't really on a bridge. It was more like they had that moving kind of background on one of those rotating cylinder thingamajiggers. And that's how they did it. And that's how they did a lot of... Um, movies back in the day because um that was most uh, cost effective and it made sense honestly I, I think that was ingenious for the the golden era of hollywood um <clears throat> a lot of things the 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 replacement for that now is green screen uh mocap too but let's see i think translating that actually takes a little bit more time that's probably why avatar took so long you know the um improvements but as far as the movie is concerned i give it three out of five it's, it's not perfect but still a great story um very easy to follow there's a running gag and, and then at the end the uh the deputy the man who becomes the deputy the one who is um promoted he narrates, he breaks the fourth wall. So what's interesting is there is something historically accurate about this film. Back in the day in the unlawful wild, wild west as we know it, it was pretty common for people to come into a town and if they had the moxie and the, um, the gusto and the wherewithal and the, the steely resolve, if they stepped forward or if they just showed up, like there was the Courage the Cowardly Dog episode that this brought to mind. Here's your badge for showing up. And I remember that. I thought, yep, that's pretty much, that's the, yeah, that's, that's pretty accurate, actually. So he just shows up. But he actually, um, James Garner's character, he takes initiative to, you know, whip the town into shape, which he does. 
And he, he uses intimidation and tall tales. And he's really actually a very fast draw. So that part is um, accurate about who he is as, um, you know, this man of character. But he does still have cowardice. <laughs> but at the end, he resolves to, um, to steal his courage and stick with um, his promise. To, and especially for Prudy. So, you know, sorry, spoiler, but um, th there is a lot of truth in saying that um, people did show up to become sheriff and to, um, to do their best to make something unlawful lawful. Um, he became sheriff and then the deputy, uh, the guy who, who shoveled horse stables, Jake, he... Um, he promoted him to become deputy, and later on, in the last part of the film, he becomes the sheriff, the most beloved sheriff of the town. And I'm kind of curious if Hang'em High was based on some historical facts, perhaps, because he said, I know it's a fictional account, but um, Jake's character said he later becomes sheriff when he's narrating at the end of the film. He said, I became sheriff, and I became the most beloved character that this um this town ever knew and i thought well you didn't even say who you were so i don't know who you are so i'm wondering if any histor historians out there would be able to clue me in but um as far as movies concerned i i love western so obviously two thumbs up james garner great actor tremendous in anything he does just kind of like the duke i love the duke yeah you know? but i think that like the Duke, James was probably pigeonholed quite a bit to play those roles, you know, exclusively, which is just so limiting. And, and people should look at the whole um, character or the, the, um, the range of an actor rather than just, you know, forcing them into a hole that they don't necessarily want to fit into. It is, you know they should be able to do something that they enjoy i mean i know the duke did enjoy what he did but he had more um talent than just doing military films and westerns but that's all he's known for and i think james garner that's all he was known for but it wasn't a perfect film but it was a really well done western despite the whole patriarchy thing um, I enjoyed it. I liked Westerns, so, um, notwithstanding, you know, you can take my, um, my kind of egalitarian view of it, though you wish. Um, but other than that, studio is slow going, but it's coming together. There's a learning curve to the software that my surrogate brother has to learn, which is gonna happen um i told him trust the process process he said well what does that mean i said trust the process you know there's a process to everything and we just have to learn how that goes and he's like in a time to which all things under heaven i'm like yes ecclesiastes he said that's biblical i said yes it is and it's a song too oh so everything kind of fit together and then i told him i had goose pimples because uh other than jeremiah 29 that um, particular part of the Bible keeps coming back to me, especially when I've gone through this period of trial and tribulation and testing. Ecclesiastes 3, um, you know, there's a time to everything. Uh, there's a time of purpose unto which under heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to sow, a time to build up, a time to rend down and and all those things in between i thought holy moly yeah that that just it gave me chills and i thought okay well god if you're giving me a message your message received um and thank you and to be honest to to hear that clear cut of the communication from my creator our creator gives me pause and i'm humbled that i would hear that but it just it's been happening a lot i've i've been seeing a lot of things happening recently and um i'm not crazy and i told john about something that i've been experiencing recently and i think my abilities um are being becoming more pronounced it's like 
you know, a refined wine like everything else. It makes sense. I think with age, that comes as well if you're an esper like myself. But um, that's about all I have to say about Hang 'em High. So until next time, catch you on the flip side. Live long and prosper. Ciao, tutti.